G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is we're going to be looking at how to simplify SIRDs. Now, uh, look, I know a couple of things. First off, uh, SIRDs are not everybody's favourite uh, mathematical topic. In fact, I remember at school I actually really hated doing SIRDs. Um, so I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible, okay, because I remember being actually utterly confused at school with these. Um, yeah, that expression simplifying, I always thought it'd be, it's a strange expression, I always thought it'd be a lot more simple if you didn't have to do this sort of thing, but here you go. Um, now, first off, thirds are numbers which basically can only be expressed exactly using a root power, so say the square root of 2. If you were to type this into your calculator, this would be, give you an answer for say, uh, 1.414, and it would give you a whole string of decimals, but the thing is, these decimals would never hit a pattern, they'd never become recurring, they'd just be this seemingly um, random string of decimals and they'd never end. And so this thing is known as an irrational number and this is the reason we use thirds is because this is the most exact way we can express this particular value. Okay, so um, we're going to be looking at simplifying thirds, so bigger ones than this. Now, the way that we basically do this is using the information that we have of how to multiply thirds. Now, when we multiply thirds, we have this rule. Now, I'm going to throw this uh, particular rule at you and I'm going to explain it once again so you know how it works. Okay, so if you haven't seen any earlier videos on how to multiply thirds, that's okay. You'll be able to catch up here. So, the, the, the rule for multiplying thirds is as follows, where we have the square root of an expression A times the square root of some number B equals the square root of a times b. Now, that's a nice simple sort of thing. I'll explain how this works using non third numbers. So, say we had the square root of uh, 4 and we times this by the square root of 9. Now, the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. If we multiply these, we get 6, right? Okay, because the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. We multiply these, we get 6. This is equal to, well, 6 is the square root of 36 and you can see it's 4 times 9 is 36 and this is this rule does work here okay so hopefully you're pretty comfortable with this rule okay so get 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 comfortable with it <laughs> and we'll use it to actually simplify a few third expressions okay so the first ones we're going to do are these um, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do three of them we'll do say the square root of 28 now what we use to do these is we use uh, numbers that are going to help us get a perfect square. I'll show you this. what, what I mean by this. So say, it's, it's really worth actually when you do this, jotting down a quick list. So we have 2 squared, which is 4. We have 3 squared, which is 9. We have 4 squared, which is 16. We have 5 squared, which is 25. We have 6 squared which is 36, 7 squared, 49, and so on and so forth. And we're going to use these to help us simplify. So we're going to use this rule and this idea here to help us simplify these expressions. Uh, and when, we, when you're getting asked in maths to try and simplify these, what they're literally asking you to do is they're trying to get you to get the lowest possible surge you can here. And it might be some number times this lowest possible number here, okay? Now, the way we do this is as follows. I'll show you the steps in doing this. So first off, what we want to do here is we literally look for some factors of 28, especially ones where we have one of these numbers here, this 4, 9, 16, rah, 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 rah. Now, here we have our 28, and 28, the number 4 goes into it. So 4 goes into it. And 4, 7 to 28. So what we have here is 28 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 because this particular rule here says that's the case. So I hope you, so you're good with that. So we can simplify this further because the square root of 4 is 2 and we're going to be times that by the square root of 7. Now look, does that look simpler at all? Hey look, it doesn't look that much simpler to me, I'll always grant that. But that is what you're being asked to do when you're being asked to simplify these, okay? So, hopefully you're pretty good with these. Let's give another one a practice, okay? So, you, you should be pretty good with these, okay? It does take a bit of the guesswork out once you, you know what you're doing with these, <laughs> obviously. Now, um, 
So say I'm going to get you to work out the square root of 72 and you're asked to simplify this. Now, just one thing with this. So you decide, okay, now what I'm going to do is find some factors of 72. And you might look down your list here and think, okay, does 4 go into 72? And you'll find out that it does. Does 9 go into 72? And you'll find out it does. Does 16 go into 72? No, and 25 doesn't, but 36 does. 36 goes in twice. 49 doesn't. So we have three different uh, numbers here that actually go into 72. Uh, that's the perfect square. So we can have 4, 9, or 36 here. The one that you choose is the largest one, so 36 here. Okay, so this one equals the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. Okay, because this will give us the lowest possible third here. Does that make sense? So if we simplify this, the square root of 36 is 6, and we're going to be multiplying that by the square root of 2. And again, that's the most simple expression you can get for this. So what about we give you one, I'll give you one more example for this. Okay, because this I remember, I'll be honest, I went a Appallingly at school in this, I, I, I think I remember. Okay, so let's uh, go through another example here. So say I want you to actually go through and find a simplification. In fact, I'm going to go through a couple more examples. A square root of, uh, what about we do 48? So it's worth going through your list here and you go, well, 4 goes into it. Um, what else goes into it here? Does 9 go into it? 9 doesn't go into it. Does 16 go into it? Uh, yeah, it does. Goes in three times, yeah? Uh, 25 doesn't, 36 doesn't, 49 doesn't. So these are our two numbers here. So we're going to make this, this is the one we're going to choose here, the 16. So this is equal to the square root of 16. And the number you times by 16 to get 48 is 3. So, uh, let's work this out. So the square root of 16 is this. So the square root of 16 is 4. And we're going to put that times the square root of 3. And that's our simplified answer. So uh, hopefully you're pretty good with these. Now I'm going to just give you a slight variation that you might get on these. Okay, um, I just would think it would be a bit remiss of me if I didn't do this. Yeah. Okay, so you might also get these sort of things where you actually do use, you get asked to actually, uh, say, work out the, the simplification of, say, something like this, 5 square root 12. So when you do this, again, treat this much the same at the start, and we have to find some factors of 12. So 4 goes into it, and 4 is going to be our, our factor here, okay? So we're going to have... We're going to have 4 and 3 here. So this is equal to 5 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Okay? I probably could have written that a little bit nicer, actually. Um, in fact, I might. Okay? So 5 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, so all you've really done is just put this 5 out the front here. Okay, so if we were to do this, this is equal to 5 times the square root of 4, which is 2 times the square root of 3. And this, we can actually take a bit further, so it's 5 times 2 is 10. And we're multiplying this by the square root of 3, so there's our answer. So how do you feel with those? Do you feel okay with them? Hopefully you feel really good with simplifying thirds. They're not that bad, okay? They're, look. I agree with you. They don't ever, to me, ever feel like I've quite got an answer. Okay, this, to me, feels like a problem unto itself. But this is what you're being asked to do in maths when you're being asked to do this. So hopefully that's made it a little bit easier. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.